we have an apple, an orange, and an onion. Yes. I've done this too. Well, yeah, the multiple, the uh, multiple, well, it's like an anti-personnel device, you know. Uh, Bobby, the trigger's there. Bobby, your job is to trigger man. Bad food. <laughs> uh, did you bring a cow? It's the, uh... Bob, you see the... If you're selling milk or bottle. Okay. Okay. Now, be very careful. Once that pin is in, now it's now it's it's cocked and loaded, and you want to make sure that you're far enough away so that if anything happens, you're safe. And you want to keep just a little tiny bit of tension on this. Not a lot. This is plenty. This is plenty. Okay. Gentlemen, the safety officers' jobs at this point is to make sure that there's nobody standing in front of you. involved real quick about this, okay? Basically, there's the reason why catapults are such an excellent way to explain physics is because there's a lot of some basic physics principles taking place at the same time. Number one, you have the effect of gravity. Number two, you have, we're talking about simple machines. This arm, this throwing arm, is nothing more than a lever or a lever. The axle that it spins on is the fulcrum. Just like a seesaw has the pivot point in the middle, where the seesaw is back and forth. Well, the reason why a seesaw works the way it does is because basically, basically, there's the same amount of weight on either side. Unless I get on it with Mr. Cooperman, <laughs> then it's a different story. Then it becomes a catapult. <laughs> uh, so, but, but this is a lever, and this is, this is one of the reasons why this works so well. The distance between the end of this arm, where the axle is for the counterweight, and the pivot point where the fulcrum is, is much shorter. It's three to four times shorter than the length of the arm that throws it. Now, since this arm is all one piece, of course it's all connected together, and it spins around the axle, it's spinning at the same speed because it's all one piece, just like a propeller. Except because this distance here from the axle to the pivot point of the counterweight is so short, it's, it actually makes a faster speed than the end of the arm on the, on the throwing arm because it's so much farther away from the axle that even though the arm itself at the center spinning at the same speed, the weight pulling down on this arm actually whips the longer end, the farther end away from the axle of the throwing arm. That's actually, there's something else that's added to that action by the sling that we throw the projectile in 
which as the arm swings up, as the weight drops down and whips the arm around, it pulls the sling along the bottom of the trebuchet, along the trough, right? And when the sling comes off, off the bottom of the trebuchet, it's going in this direction. And it's got a cantaloupe or a basketball or whatever the projectile is that weighs in there, and it wants to keep going that way. What happens is, as it gets pulled out, the swing gets to its full extension. When all of the when the string is at its full length and it can't go anymore, and then it begins to follow the arm in its arc path. And when the arm is about 45 degrees angle, ideally, if we did it, if we done it right, the little clip on the front that's on the pin at the end of the throwing arm, the clip slips off because now the sling has whipped around and it's at the same angle as the throwing arm and it's in the same direction, it's in the same line. So the pin is released. The sling opens up and the projectile, which now is going in a circular path, is released at a 45 degree angle. That's it. Okay? Now it's time for silly hats. Ah! 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 Ah!